Namaste. I am recording this Ashtanga mix class and it's January, it's cold. And I just wanna give you a couple tips for practicing at home or whatever space you may be in. If it is winter time and you're used to a studio that typically is like at least 75 degrees, think of the temperature in your home. It's probably set to about 70. And so whether or not you want to sweat or not is not the point. Even if you're doing restorative or yin, when you're being more grounded and rather still, the body temperature can drop and you can start to get cold. And we don't want the body to be cold while we're doing yoga. Um, I don't necessarily think it needs to be 100 degrees either, um, but you want it to be, when I say room temp, I think anywhere from, um, you know, like 73 to 78 or 80 degrees would be great. Um, we are going to be flowing, so we will be building some heat. And if you tend to run hot anyway, you may not need a space heater or, you know, need anything to warm up the the room. Excuse me about that coming. Um, but I do have a space heater going and I just wanted to mention it because you may hear that um, humming sound coming from the background. Uh, but I need it this morning because it's cold. Uh, so let's step on the mat. I am not going to be using any props today. Obviously, for any of these poses, you can grab blocks if you need them for stability, if you need them to help you with balance, if it takes you deeper into the pose, or if you need to modify a pose. Um, I really do these Ashtanga vinyasa type classes um, really for people who are already knowledgeable with yoga, who already know the postures, and who are practicing uh, you know, caution with their body and not pushing themselves too far. So be aware of that. All right, let's meet on the mat. So let's go ahead and come to a comfortable seat, sitting with the spine straight. And even though we say a straight back, you know, you want to honor and observe the natural curves of the spine. Perhaps in the neck. And how it indents and again in the low back. Root down through your seat. Close your eyes. Check in with yourself. Notice what you're bringing to the mat with you. For instance, if there's any ailments occurring in the body, acknowledge that. And be sure to be compassionate towards that region whenever it's targeted. Observing the state of your mind. Remembering this practice is a purification for the mind and the body. So hopefully we'll be able to clear and clean things up. Perhaps noticing what is surfacing in your heart. Whether or not you feel connected or disconnected, scattered or grounded. Observing this without judgment.
and place your hands together to prayer. Set your intention for this practice. Why are you here? What's driving you to this practice? What are you hoping to gain? And once you set your intention, consider dedicating your practice to someone or something, some place or some situation. And from this loving intention, from this devoted dedication, we'll begin. Open the eyes. Go ahead and come to stand. When you come to stand at the top of the mat, go ahead and root down the soles of the feet. Line up the legs. We're going to do some breath work first. Bring your hands back to prayer. And every time you bring your hands to prayer position at your heart, remember the intention. Remember your dedication. Remember it's representative of grace and gratitude. Now constrict the back of your throat, breathe in and out through your nose, allowing the breath to become audible to hear. It actually sounds like the space heater I have, except there's a break when the inhale transfers to the exhale. Or when the exhale turns into the inhale. It has that whooshing, whispering type sound. On your next in breath, go ahead and reach the arms up towards the sky. Exhale, fold down, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift and lengthen up halfway. Exhale, step it down the mat and lower to Chaturanga. Inhale to upward facing dog. Exhaling to downward facing dog. So hold and breathe. And you may notice if it's earlier in the day, your body may be stiffer. If that's the case, feel free to walk the dog. At any juncture, if you need to modify poses, a good modification for this particular asana is a puppy pose. I'll demonstrate that really quick in case you need it. Or even a child's pose if you need a break. And I'm demoing now. Otherwise, you'll be holding your downward facing dog in the mix of the Surya Namaskaras. Inhale, bring the feet to the top of the mat, lifting up halfway. Exhale, gently lower. Inhale, build all the way back up. Exhale, returning to the salutation seal. Inhaling, open up. Exhale, hinge forward from the hips. Inhale, lift half. Exhale, you're taking Chaturanga Dandasana and you're welcome to float back to this pose versus moving through plank. From up dog, carry it back to down dog. Eyes are open here. Gaze is fixated upon one point. Continue to stay with your Ujjaya Pranayama, that whispering sounding breath. Let this fuel you and carry you through the practice. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, expand. 
Exhale, recenter. Inhaling, open up. Exhale, drop back in. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, drop and hover, chaturanga. Inhale, rise to up. Exhale, cross over to down dog. Hold and breathe. Let your breath be your meditation. Controlling it, observing it, and listening to it. Inhale to the top of the mat. Look out. And exhale, bow out. Inhale, standing up. Exhale, Samas Tihi. Again. Exhale, hinge. Inhale, lift. Exhale, low push up. Inhale, lift. Exhale, roll it back. Equalize the weight in your hands. Equalize the lift in your hips. And equalize the pressure down through your feet. Inhale, moving it through to the top. Exhale, drop in. Inhaling up. Exhale, sama stick to heat. We're going one more time. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhale, open up. Exhale, sink down. Inhale, boost up. Exhale, roll back. Any meditation on breath here. Inhale to the top. Exhale, roll down. Inhale, stand up. Exhale, Samas Titihi. Moving into B. Inhale, strike chair. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sprout. Exhale, chaturanga. You can move through plank if you want. Continue that vinyasa, but we're not holding down dog to the end. So right foot steps through. Back heel solidifies as you rise. We're coming right back down. Not holding this down dog either. Left foot steps through. Back heel solidifies to the floor. Coming up. Immediately coming down. Now the third down dog in this sequence we hold. And we can have that mini meditation on breath.
You can walk, you can lunge, you can float the feet to the top. Exhale, bow out. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, Samastitihi. Inhale, chair. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, Charanga. Inhale, open heart. Exhale, roll it back. Your right foot immediately steps through. Warrior one. Back to the vinyasa. Left foot leads next. Continue the flow. Pause here and breathe. Your mind, your heart began to race. This is your time to slow it down. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, Samastitihi. Couple more of those. Inhale, chair. Exhale, fold. Inhale, uplift. You can always pass through plank if you don't want to bounce back to Chaturanga. Warrior with the right foot leading. Warrior with the left foot leading. Holding and down dog. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, drop the head and heart. Inhale, lift, knees bend, chair. Exhale, Samastitihi. We're doing one more B. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Into up dog. Out to down dog. This time, maybe try lifting your right leg up. Swing the foot through. Coming up to warrior. Back into the flow. Left foot lifts. Step it through. Bring it up. And right back down. So each one of those movements is with the inhale or an exhale. I can tell through that last little bit when I was talking, I uh, lost the rhythm or cadence of my breath. So this is a good point to reestablish it. I personally think downward facing dog is the most important pose in the sun sow. But that's just me. Inhale, feet to the top, open heart, 
melt it down. Lift to chair. And it's the heart. Pause. Breathe. Remember your seal, your intention, your dedication. Grace. Gratitude. Hands to hips. Pop the feet apart. Shoulders back. Exhale, lower. Hook the peace mudra around each big toe. Fold in. Let your neck go. Feel as though you're trying to bring the weight down onto the fingers. Inhale, release a little. Flip the hands, tuck them under the feet. And then lower the head. Padahastasana. Your next out breath, see if you can drive down lower with your heart. And remove the hands, solidify the feet, bring the hands to the hips, slowly come up, feet together, hands together. Now, usually I turn to face you today. I'm going to step to the right like I'm supposed to. Turn the right foot, lengthen out over that side, windmill down, triangle. Right shoulder rolls back. From triangle, use the pinnacle of the pose, that left hand to draw up. Right foot turns in, left foot turns out. Press back into the hips, lower in, triple knots and up. Revolve open through your belly and chest. Again, pinnacle of the pose, use your right hand to lift and then relax. We're going to rotate the feet, right foot's going to face the back of your mat. You're going to offset your left foot, square the hips. Your left arm's gonna be in the lead as you lift it up. And then as you exhale, you're bringing the hand down. Some people bring it to the inside. Some people bring it to the outside. Some need to stack on the leg or a block. Find what works for you in the now. Try not to allow the right hip to swing out. Tuck it in, drive it back. When you're ready, build up. Turn the feet. Set up for the pose. Revolving triangle, right arm lifts. Exhale, bring it down. Where should your hand be today? Try not to expect it to always be the same. Part of yogic philosophy is to let go of expectations. Good, bring the hand down, lift your way up, step up, samasthiti. Inhale, step right, turn the right foot, lunge that knee, rest on it with your arm. Left arm reaches up or over the ear. Glue the back foot down. Inhale up. 
right foot turns in, left foot rotates out. Lunge the knee, stack, right arm, reaches skyward or creating that long diagonal line. Inhale, draw it up. Relax the arms a moment. Rotate your right foot. Spin off your left heel. Left arm to the outside. Right arm rising. There's other variations if you prefer. Right hand lowers, the back heel drops. Bring it up, turn it around. Right arm to the outside. Left arm reaching up and back. Relax the arm, turn and plant the back foot, bring it up. Relax the arms. Left foot turns, step it to the top. Samas DT Inhale, step to the right. This time we're going to square the feet. Hands to hips, shoulders back, folding into Prasarika Padottanasana B. Which means the hands stay here, shoulders stay back, feet stay grounded, but we invert. Root the feet, draw it up. We're only doing two of these today. Lace the hands, shoulders crank back, exhale forward fold. Breathe. Inhale, rise. Exhale, hands to heart. Left foot rotates, step to the front. Inhale, right foot steps back, turn the left foot in. Instead of having the hands appear in front, we're actually going to attempt prayer hands behind the back. If that seems like an impossible task today, cross your arms, not worth it. Forward fold. Arjvottanasana. Inhale, pull up. Exhale, turn the feet. I need some reflexology. I just noticed this week the bottoms of my feet are a little unhappy. Open the chest. Forward fold. If you've never treated yourself to reflexology and you're a yogi, you're missing out. Think about how barefoot we usually are. And if you're not typically barefoot, you are on the mat. You're doing all these exercises barefoot. And our feet need to be taken care of. And there's tons of reflex points on the soles of the feet. It's like a map of the whole body to organs, to uh, different regions. And it's pretty amazing. Inhale, bring it up. Turn to the side. Step it to the front. Cool, so now that the soles of my feet are burning, <laughs> we're gonna 
try to balance and uh, separate the toes on the left side, hand to the hip. You can do Padre Bhusasana A, holding the knee, or tagging the toe. Stay to B, holding the knee or holding the toe. Back to A, to D, stepping it down. True, you guys, I am not kidding you. My feet, it's weird. It's just in the last few days. All right, separate the right toes. Prepare for the other side. Padigustasana A, holding knee or toe. The A. The D. And release. All right, we're moving into tree pose. I'm going to turn this way because I've been looking out the window. There's a lot of activity out there. It's distracting me. And you can always do that in your home environment too. Turn where there's a little distraction. Right knee is going to bend. Open from the hip. You can be anywhere on the inside of that leg for tree. But you also have the option to take half lotus. I'll let you determine which is best. And again, I'm not giving as much instruction because I expect everyone doing this video already has experience. Some knowledge about alignment and already aware of their bodies. All right, we're gonna release that side. Stack and stand on the right. Determine if you want regular tree. Opening the left hip. And the foot can reside anywhere up on the inside of the leg. And if you prefer the half lotus, you can express it this way. Release. Hands to heart, turn it back to face the front if you're switched it up. Inhale, let's take chair. We're gonna work through another vinyasa. So fold, inhale, uplift. Exhale to chaturanga, however you want to arrive. Into up dog. Now to down dog. All right, we're gonna step the right foot forward. Lower the back heel. Come up to warrior two. Straighten that leg, turn the feet. Strike warrior two. From Virabhadrasana two, we're coming back up. Helicopter the hands down, take it back through a vinyasa. That warrior two felt good, didn't it? Is that just me? 
sometimes I wish we had four of the warrior twos more than the warrior ones and that be sends out. All right, we're gonna come down to the floor. So you can either bounce forward to sit or you can always dip to your knees, right? <laughs> and be more gentle coming around this way. We're in Dandasana. Lift the arms, and then we forward fold, Paschimottanasana. Inhale up. Exhale, hands back. Now you can come up to a uh, reverse plank this way, lifting the hips off the floor or reverse table with knees bent like this. Choose one. Zip down, slide the feet out. Slide the sits bones back. Bend your right knee. Okay. We're going to take the right arm to the inside of it. And we're going to wrap the arm around the front of it. Lengthen your left arm, cross it behind the back, maybe latch the hands. Inhale up, remove that bind, and then open the right hip, Johnny Shashasana. Arms relift, exhale forward fold, spinning that navel towards the midpoint of your thigh. Doesn't matter how high or low you are. Traditionally, we gaze out towards the toes, but if that strains your neck, you can lengthen it and just look down. Slowly build it up, scoop under the heel, bring it across to the other leg, circle that right arm behind your back, and you can bring a strap or a scarf or a belt to use to bring the hand and the foot together if you can't quite latch here. Left arm lifts, exhale release. Oh, I haven't done this pose in a while. I forgot how great it is. Expect to see this in Blissful Flow next week. Inhale, halfway lift. Ankara Drishti or Urdhva Drishti. Move your back hand. See if you can keep this in half lotus when you bring the knee back. And it may turn out looking like this, okay? Showing you different angles. But if you lean towards that right sit bone, look what happens. The knee drops and you'll be able to do it, okay? If you cannot quite get that right knee down as you move towards the right side of your seat, you don't want this foot to stay. You want to just lower it to the floor like that. All right. I'm going to come back because I'm going to do it this fancier way. Your left arm shoots to the inside of the knee and then you create your wrap. Right arm wraps next. Head bows. Wow. You guys, I haven't done Ashtanga in a while. I'm feeling it in my ankle, and I've never felt it there before. What is the foot stuff? That's root chakra. Where's your stuff showing up? 
the heart chakra, your eye, throat chakra. Slowly come up. Whew. Okay, lengthen your left leg. <laughs> Lift your right knee, flatten the foot. Circle that left arm around and notice we can get kind of like funky here. So really invest in your back, in your torso before winding deeper into your twist. You want to create the bind of the arms. You can attempt that. Demoing it here. So you can actually release. Whew. That felt good. I really want a hip opener. I know that's not part of Ashtanga. And that's okay because we do a mix up anyway. Slide your left foot in. Let's do it. Let's do double pigeon. Double pigeon with the right leg now on top. Ankles and knees are stacked. And forward fold. So just if you're ever, um, maybe, maybe your issues, maybe you're stuck, maybe you're feeling uh, like things are showing up in your second chakra and your reproductive organs and your low back in your hip region and your pelvic floor. Um, or maybe you're just wanting to build up to a lotus position where we stack the foot at the hip crease. You could actually do this pose, bringing your hands over. Just do it quickly with me. We're not gonna hold it for a long period of time. But if we were doing like a Lotus workshop, we would be leaning out over the left thigh. And you could stay here. We're just staying for a few breaths. You could stay longer, much longer actually. Walk your hands now over towards that left knee. It's like you're working around the clock. Hands out in front again. And now I've got the song, we're gonna rock around the clock tonight. <laughs> Walk your hands over towards the right knee. Maybe to the outer thigh or hip. And again, you can hold this for a minute, two minutes, three minutes, you know, on each of these segments before coming back up. All right, we'll crisscross ankles, bring the hands through, and you can bounce it back or you can step it back to take a vinyasa. You can come down to your knees like we did earlier. Or you can crisscross the ankles, come through, straighten your legs. Either way, we'll bend the left knee. We'll left arm to the inside. Hook that arm. Circle the right. Forward fold. Inhale up, bring that foot on over, down into Shasana. Arms lift, sit forward. Find your edge. Well,
scoop under the heel. Half lotus, if that's available. If it's not available, by the way, just keep the foot here. And you can still do the pose, right? Maybe you need an apparatus. Maybe you can take the handhold. And then you're ready, fold. Inhale, lift. All right, release the back arm. We're just gonna sit, see if we bend that right knee. If we lower to the left sit bone, if we can be here for the pose. If we can't be here for the pose, remember this is where the foot drops to the floor, just behind the other ankle. Okay, let me reposition. Right arm reaches and then creeps the bind. The left arm can join the bind, and then you're bowing out. It's so funny because my left foot is not bothering me here, and it was my right ankle that really was, and it's also been the sole of my right foot. But something's going on with my right side. I have a feeling I know what it is. I think it has to do with the liver. The body's been uh, taking in more chemicals than normal. We had a cleaner come to our house for the first time, and my allergies were a mess for two days in a row. And then we had the snowstorm. And during the snowstorm, you know, I hadn't even been anywhere. I, I, was, I was taking a break from work and uh, after the allergies were really bad, you know, sinus wise, I broke out this big rash across my stomach area. I think it's the liver working too hard. You need to do a liver cleanse. All right, we're gonna straighten the right leg, cross that left foot over. And then when we hook the arm, remember we can round and get kind of shortened. So lengthen up, left hand behind the back. This, I can already tell, I'm, I'm not gonna find the arms on this side. But we did attempt it on the other side. If you wanna attempt it on this side, go for it. Exhale and wind. This is where I got the idea, let's add in hip opener. So let's do that to match it up. So it's double pigeon or fire long. Let's fold over the lap. And of course, sometimes this is enough just sitting straight. So if any of you watching, have your house clean and they use uh, more natural products or green products, please let me know. I used to know someone, but the business went away a couple of years ago, so. So let's rock around the clock. So let's go ahead and come up and let's dip over to the outside of the right thigh. Inhale, 
be as high or as low as you want to be, as long as you can comfortably breathe. Go over to the right knee. Back to the front. To the left knee. Outer back. Lock. Ready, release. Ooh. Extend your legs, shift the knees. Crisscross the ankles, shoot forward to your palms. You can step back to plank. I don't want another vinyasa, but you can take it. I'm just going to go from plank to downward facing dog right now. Here we're moving towards an arm balance. So bend your knees, hop the feet forward. Come down so that your hands are more or less at your feet. Start to dip the tailbone, lift your head up. Squeeze the knees in, heel toe the feet together. Bhuja Pindasana. Fire flat. Bring the feet down, seat down, move my selenite, hands slide through, feet can slide out, or you can take another variation of Pramasana. Hands in, feet together, Oh, Lean back, stretch the legs. Lift the chest. Legs together. Maybe closer. Separate. Drop the heels, go down, hold asana. So your hands can be here, 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 here. All right, so pick one. Up. Legs together, bend the knees, hook your hands under your thighs, float and flex the feet, shoulders roll back, arms reach out, and your legs can even straighten if you want. Crisscross, bump up. Recommit, half boat or full boat. Crisscross, 
thump up, reset, hold and breathe. We're going to catch the right leg as we lower to the floor. Maybe see if you can hold the calf or the big toe. Lower the left foot to the floor. Reach the left arm over the left leg. Lift the head up, nose towards knee. Stay elevated. Swap the legs. Lower the right heel. Continue to hold the calf or the big toe. Three. Release. Bend the knees, flatten the soles of the feet, bring the arms beside you, rise to bridge, Sattu Bandhasana. And Sattu Bandhasana, keep those knees, thighs narrow. If you want to go deeper, hook the shoulders under the body, clasp your hands, lift the pelvis up, lift the chest towards the chin. Now I'm not going into wheel pose, but if you want to go into upward bow or wheel, flip the hands over the shoulders and press up. Slowly coming down. I know we normally do fish after shoulder stand, but we're skipping the shoulder stand series today. Lengthen your legs out, point your toes forward. You're sitting on your hands. You're lifting your chest. Taking the head back. I tell you, the beach has been calling me. I haven't seen it. Man, two and a half years. <laughs> I'm thinking about Barb and Mary right now. They took a trip to Hilton Head and we're zooming in from there. Oh, I need an escape to the beach. <laughs> what do you think of when you do fish? Do you think of the beach? Do you think of the lake? Do you think of hunger? <laughs> Slowly come up. Maybe you think of Christianity. It's a symbol for that, too. Ah, curl the knees in. Pausing a moment. So since we didn't do the queen of asanas, let's do the king of asanas, which is the headstand. So you can roll to one side at this point. Or you can remove your hands from top of the knees and you can rock them all up. Either way. So this, I'm on a hardwood floor and my mat's very thin, so I'm gonna grab a blanket. So let me just show you what you can do here once I get my blanket fixed the right way. Different traditions of yoga do different blankets. Uh, so our Rupa Yoga has the really thick, uh, kind of plushy wool-like blankets. Iyengar typically has the stiffer wool blankets. I really like just the Mexican blankets. Okay, so what's kind of nice about using a blanket, it obviously gives more padding for the head, but if you really just like the feel of the sticky mat, you can always drape the sticky mat on top like I just showed you. Please use a wall if you need that for stability. And like I said, uh, the only ones that should be practicing this are those with experience already. Um, I would not necessarily suggest trying headstand on your own at home. I would first try it live with a teacher 
someone there to observe you, to watch you, to give you pointers, um, instead of just doing it at home. But if you already kind of know what's up, you're gonna wrap your hands around your elbows and then lace the fingers together. Now I'm wearing a really big band today, so I'm gonna take that ring off. Those pinky fingers on the floor and then you bring the head in. Then you wanna make sure that you're activating your triceps, your deltoids, your shoulders, your core. And then we curl the toes. We walk the feet in. Now, the first way I learned to do a headstand was just curling up like this before I even straighten my legs. And then eventually, right, you can just lift on up. Pointing the toes. Some people really prefer stretching one leg up and then letting the other one float up to join. Right, so it's not kicking. And just to show you one more variation, and you may already be in it, so don't worry about it, is piking the legs up. And that wasn't too great, but good enough. It got me here. When you're ready to come down, bring it down. Take the weight off the top of your head. Make sure you get your rings back on. <laughs> Had rings left at the studio before that. And then fold over. Childs. Slowly come up. All right. We're going to end before Shavasana with full lotus. So we want the right foot to stack first. And if you kind of bring that left heel in, like you were going toward that double pigeon, instead of bringing it all the way under, you just bring it close. So as you lean forward, your right knee drops. And then you can scoop underneath the left foot to lift it. You want to stack your hands under your thighs and lift up and breathe for a moment. Sit down. Your hands, now well, some people can take, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> hands all the way to hold the feet. I bring my hands in reverse namaste. And then the yoga mudra is just folding forward. Considering being grateful for the yogi, yoginis who have kept this practice alive and well carried it throughout the ages, all this knowledge. It's been building and evolving over a millennia. We are here to benefit today. Let's release the hands. If you prefer sitting in meditation, this is considered one of the ideal poses to sit in for meditation. If you prefer Shavasana, recline. You can even use a bolster, you can cover with a blanket, you can use an eye pillow. I'm gonna stay in seated meditation.
So since some of us are in meditation and some are taking rest, I want you to just hone in upon one technique. So it could be observing your breath. It may be creating and envisioning a sacred symbol in your third eye. Reciting a positive word or affirmation or even using a mantra to recite over and over and over again.
Find and relaxation, begin to open up your breath. And once you do so, create a little gentle movement to the extremities. Eventually curling in, rolling to one side, and joining the rest of us who are sitting. Take a moment to check in with your body, mind, and your heart. Hopefully you can feel how you have created some inner alchemy and you cultivated a little inner calm and peace, or perhaps just feeling energized. more clear-minded. Take whatever you're feeling with you off the mat. Let your yoga continue to work on your behalf. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Namaste. Namaste.